Hello and welcome back to part 3 of making this robot and in today's video we are going to be making the materials for this guy. Uh, so in the last video we made a rig and made him walk along a curve and we don't really necessarily need a walking animation but it's always fun to have and it was just to show you how to make the rig. But in today's video we are just going to be making the materials and I'm going to be making this uh, procedurally and then in the next video we are going to be baking them and applying them to the model itself. So for this part, we don't need to UV unwrap anything. It's uh, perfectly fine this way. We can just use the object uh, coordinates for the material. So what we're going to be doing is just setting up the uh, viewport display. So we need to add in a light. Just place it above our little robot, scale it up and increase the scaling in and increase the power, of course. So this is uh, way too much. This uh, is pretty cool. This is pretty much all we need just to preview it and i'm going to be switching over to cycles but you could probably do this in eevee as well uh you just have a little bit uh, fewer nodes and things to work with but it should be fine you should be able to follow along and use it in eevee uh, when we're going to be baking of course you need to be in cycles so if you really want to use cycles and materials in eevee you can just bake them and apply them as a texture and use that so now if we just look at our model we can see it already looks pretty pretty nice it's really pretty but we are going to be adding some color so go over here uh, go into the shader editor and then just select our object and make a new material and we are going to be making a procedural uh, rust material or a paint material and applying it to our object in the last video we made a pure ref as you can see here and I said I wanted to copy some of those things and apply them to my model. And one of the things for the material was these stickers. And I really still want to add this, but we are going to be adding this uh, when we are texturing, since this is more of a like exact type of thing. It's not really procedural. Uh, the sticker has to be there. Uh, it cannot be anywhere else. So we have to do it in a texturing phase. But we could make a material that looks something like this uh, metal material. Or something like this. But it's way too clean. So we'll improvise and start off by recreating this. So back in Blender, we can uh, figure out what we want to do. So the first thing I want to teach you is to use edge masks for these scratches. So if we make this black. What I want to do is just make these edges uh, white. So we can make them uh, less rough and more metal-ish. So like a scratch mask. So to do that, we only need a couple notes. So shift A to add in the note and search for the um, search for the bevel note. Let's place it here, we can preview it. If you have the note wrangler add on enabled. So in preferences, just search note wrangler and you should enable this. And now if we Press Control, Shift, and left mouse button. So now with it previewed, we can see the bevel. So what this basically does is it takes the normals and then it will smooth it out. So you basically just have the same uh, thing you would have if you had a bevel here, but in a normal map. So right here, you can see it's smoother. And if you add this to a bump, it will be smoother. Of course, not in the geometry, but if you are far away, it looks like it has a bevel. So we need two of these and one of these should be set to samples of two and then a radius of 0.01 and then the other one is uh, set to 0.1 and about 10 samples. What we're going to be doing now is just adding in a factor math node, setting this to distance and if we preview this as you can see we have an edge mask. We can control the thickness by just changing the radius here and as you can see on the curved um, faces there is a little bit of uh, things going on but we can fix it with a color ramp if you really want to just delete those uh, values as you can see now it, we have a perfect edge mask that we can use for some scratches so if we just mute this color ramp as you can see it's a little bit gray here i don't know if you can notice on the youtube video since it's uh not really that clear but this is a sort of really dark gray and this is more black so you can just add a color ramp to fix that. And you can group this together by pressing Ctrl G and then setting the radius to the group input. And rename this to Edge Mask 
for the metal itself we can just use the principal bzf and then set the metallic to something like 0.7 something and then roughness to 0.2 and you have a really shiny metal you can change the roughness and metallic how you like just experiment with it until you find something you want and of course change the color i want mine to be something uh a bit bluish greenish it's also pretty dark still something like this this is the color i want my robot to be you can see the hex code here rgp code here and hsv code here if you want to copy it of course so what we want to do with this edge mask is kind of make everything that's white we want to make that uh, a lot more rough and right now our roughness is 0.0 0.7 uh, just equally across every part of this mesh but we want to subtract uh, the one from the whites so we so to do that we need a math node and set the color to the value and then set the roughness to here call this 0.7 and set this to subtract so what we've done is we've uh, change the roughness from here to here so this is your uh, global roughness input and then we're just going to be subtracting uh, one everywhere where it's white and then nothing everywhere where it's black and make sure to clamp this otherwise everything that's in the white will be minus 0.3 instead of 0.7 and we can preview this and as you can see if we look in the right lighting we can see this being a little more brighter and we have a sort of edge mask up here of course uh, if the paint is scratched off it shouldn't be this color so we need to change it as well and just give it a uh, white color instead so one of the easiest ways to do this is just add an au and saturation and value note and then copy over your color so we've basically changed the color output to here and then in the saturation we can set the edge masks then we can set the saturation to zero so everything is white and then the color to the factor and now everything is white where the edge mask is a white as well if we zoom in we can see that it's all pretty uniform so if you want you can add a name musgrave texture and mix it in with the edge mask just set it to linear light scale it up set the dimension and detail to this so 15 and 1 and as you can see there is a lot of scratches you can change the factor to something like that and preview it and this looks a lot better so this is my setup musgrave in the bottom one edge mask in the factor and then linear light and cloud to result and if we preview this, we can see those nice scratches appear. You can add in the multiply node if you want this to be more, uh, more noticeable. So if we zoom in, we can see our scratches appear. And you can change the radius to reveal more scratches. But this is our edge mask, our saturation and value, and then our principal PSDF. Something else we can do is just add in a musgrave texture again. Preview this, uh, change the scale to something like uh, 10 or 5, set the detail, detail to 15, dimension to 1 or a little bit less, something like this. Adding in a gradient texture and make sure you have the right factor enabled. So for the factor mapping, we want the generated factor and then set this uh, rotation to minus 90 degrees or 90 degrees it's 90 degrees and now everything on the bottom should be black and the rest should be white if we mix the musgrave and gradient together and change the factor we can kind of add some dirt to the bottom side and just add in a new principle bcf set the base color to something black or brownish something like this and we can mix these two together and use this as a factor but of course you don't have to do this so let's get back to the uh, 
more basic material since I want everyone to follow along. Let's not make it too complicated. So right now this is all we have, an edge mask and then uh, this Musgrave texture to add in some scratches on the side. But we also want to add some uh, things on the bottom of the faces since that's more exposed to the dirt. And if we check our reference, we can see some rust here as well. We might add some rust. And here's some dirt as well on the bottom. It's more grayish on the bottom. Uh, more rust here. And also some rust here. So I think the main thing we need to add is some rust. So we can just duplicate this uh, Musgrave texture and preview it. And then probably add this to the object vector and set this to a scale of about 5. And then we can add in a new principle to UCF. Add in a bump texture. Set the height to the height and the normal to the normal. If we preview this, we can see it's a lot more bumpy, which uh, rusted metal is most of the time. Set the base color to something rusty. And of course the material as well. We can group this by pressing Ctrl G and just setting the PSDF as the output since that's probably all we need. This color is rust. And we can mix these two together uh, with the factor of a Musgrave texture. And uh, we'll probably make a new one so it's easier to work with. And if we set the scaling to 2, as you can see this is the result. If you're happy with this, that's fine. But you can also tweak it later if you want. So you can make it more or less scaling something like this works pretty well if you want you can change this to 4d to get a w factor which is the seed value so if you find a scaling that you like but just not a, a certain pattern that you like you can just change it there and as you can see we get these big splotches of red in our material which is pretty nice if you add in a gradient texture and set this to the mapping coordinates from the generated to a rotation of 90 and then preview this you can see it becomes blacker the more to the bottom it gets and we can use that to make it more rusty at the bottom so we can add in a math texture and just preview this and see how this works then if you press Control and a scroll you can change between the values on the map node and you can find something that you like so maybe i want something like this where it's really rusty at the bottom but not that much at the top and there's a lot of things you can do you can also multiply the gradient to make it more noticeable and all those sorts of things you just have to be creative with what you want but this is just the uh, normal application of it So this is pretty much the robot material I'm going to make. Now we're just going to add a new material and just call this screen. And this will be a really simple material for the eye screen. In the texturing video, I'm going to add a, a display right here. Uh, but for now, just make this a black material. Just really simple to get a general idea of what we are going to do with that uh, face. If you want, you can also add some more materials, uh, some simple materials like uh, these buttons here. You can make them uh, lights. You can make them light up like uh, yellow or something. Uh, you can make these grates a different color. Uh, you can make these hinges a different color. Maybe black hinges is uh, works better in your case. I, I don't know, but you can do all those things. But for now, I just really like this. Uh, sharp edges with the uh, edge mask and then the rust as well I also love the color scheme so a kind of green bluish versus a red orange ish really contrasts well and I hope you exper experiment a lot with your own robot we can preview the walk cycle again and just look at the material
So this is it for this video. We have this really nice texture. And I hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you in the next episode. I'll see you then. Goodbye.